So you got sucked into the void the past couple of weeks, eh? Oh, yeah, man. What happened? Everybody quit where you were? Hello? <laughs> well, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the Norway of, of, uh, the United States. Graham, Graham and Frostbitten up here. You know what's really funny about that is last night mm-hmm. I was just thinking about are you still there? I'm still here, yeah. Oh wow. I was just listening to your story. You're it got quiet. I thought, oh god, he disappeared again. Last night that was I was called thinking, respectfully listening. Uh, oh yeah. You're a respectful guy. Okay, go on. So I was thinking about how Utah is very much looks like Sweden and there's like a lot of Swedish uh, and otherwise Scandinavian people that migrated here. Mm -hmm. Evidenced by fair hair, blue eyes, people's names, Peterson, Hansen, Mm -hmm. Thorson, all that, whatever. Um, And I've had bands like Unleashed and Entombed when they were here say that Utah really reminds them of home, Sweden. And I thought, well, if that's the case, then that must mean that Colorado is like the Norway to our Utah, because they're the ones who are always like vying for attention and making a louder noise and getting better concerts over there sometimes. And yeah, kind of like the little bratty stepbrother of Utah. <laughs> or vice versa. Yeah, I don't know. There's some dynamics there. But uh, I thought uh, Utah was more, well, they have the Swiss days, so. You know, there's your Celtic Frost connection. Isn't isn't he Swiss? So, um, you've been working like a slave. Everybody quit where you work. You're the only guy working. What else is going on? Dude, that's pretty much it, man. Um, it's it's weird because like, I I don't I'm not like ungrateful that I'm not you know that I'm working so much because it's just like. But man, it's uh, it gets exhausting working doubles. You know that you know the drill, dude. Because you're the guy. You're the guy that has to fill in when uh, your crew calls in, right? Yeah, that happens a lot. There's days where I'm just scheduled to be there all day, anyways, and then there's days like. Monday, where I go in at like 10 or 11, and I don't go home till 10 or 11 at night, and I'm the only manager there, meaning anything that happens, it's all up to me. There's like no one else there to be my buffer zone. Mm -hmm. So I often am running around like a maniac on Mondays. Um, And here's an example is uh, (laughs) last Monday, I was there all day. And then so there's, it's busy, not busy, but there's a lot of people coming in. So you got to deal with that. I've got a staff of teenagers for the most part. There's that. They need mm-hmm. guidance all the time, leadership. They're mostly pretty good at their jobs, but they sometimes, you know, you got to like, hey, do this. Hey, quit doing that. Mm-hmm. So then the Pepsi fountain in the lobby where the people are dining starts leaking or it's been leaking. No one's figured it out. But then one of the girls picks up the carpet in front of that and rolls it up to do the mopping. And she says, this is like stopping wet. Yeah. So we open up the cabinet underneath. There's like a gasket's blown or something. There's just a flood of water in there. So while that's going on, the phone rings. I answered the phone. There's a guy on the phone that says, hey, I'm in your bathroom right now. I need some paper towels. I'm like, what? what? He's like, I'm in your bathroom and I need some paper towels. I need I need to clean myself. I'm like, what the hell? You're, and he said, you're in our bathroom. He's like, yeah, I need, I need paper towels. Can you help me? I need some help. I hate to ask, but I need your help. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, God. I'm like, is a homeless guy in there again or something? Because we have homeless people all over the place in Sugar House right now because they're doing oh, yeah. a lot of construction. There's a lot of old shit they're ripping away, and it's bringing out the homeless people. Uh-huh. Um, I found syringes in the bathroom. I've caught a guy washing his underwear in the toilet septic tank once. I had a guy in there taking apart a cell phone while watching another cell phone on how to take your phone apart in the bathroom with his stuff spread out. <laughs> 
I'm like, hey, you can't be doing that here. So he moves his shit over to the other counter. I'm like, no, I mean in this bathroom. Get out of here. Get get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Anyways, this guy calls me Monday night, and I go in there with a roll of paper towel. I'm like, okay, I'm assuming I misunderstood, and we're out of paper towel. So he's standing up over the stall. I walk in. He's got his eyes are sticking up just over the stall, like on Home Improvement. You know, the guy with the fence. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. What's his name? It stinks like shit in there. Like, I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, it fucking reeks like shit. And I'm like, yeah, what do you need? And he's like, I'm trying to get out of there as quickly as possible because it just reeks of shit. He's like, I, rah, 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 rah. he's got his face pressed against the thing while he's talking. I can't really understand him. Plus, he's really chattering really fast. Yeah. So I'm like, what? And he's like, rah, 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 like wet, wet paper towel. I'm like, you don't have toilet paper in there? He's like, oh, I just need paper towel. It's more effective. I'm like, well, like this? And he just, no, 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 you got to get it wet. So I'm like, what? okay. And I'm like, why the fuck am I in here doing this? Couldn't he just come out and get paper towel out of the dispenser and do this? So yeah. I get the paper towel wet and I hand it to him. He's like, oh, no, no, like this. I'm like, what? I can't understand him. I'm like, what do you need, man? <laughs> that sounds like it's a practical joke someone's playing on you. No, it wasn't. And then I'm like, okay, so you want it wet? Like, yeah, like sopping wet, sopping wet. I'm like, okay, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, here's another one. Here's another one. Bye. So I left there. He's in there for the better part of the next hour. I'm like, one of my kids that's working up front, I'm like, he goes in there. He's like, yeah, he's still in there. I'm like, I'm going to have to go in there and throw him out. He's just some homeless guy. Mm -hmm. Then he comes out, talks to the girl up front that's working with the little kid they're working up front. Mm -hmm. starts telling her his life story why he did what he did just now i guess his wife sent him there for food while gone he called her to see what she wanted she said fuck you i'm with charlie now i'm cheating on you and we're moving out we already left you're you're what something like that so i'm like oh shit and that's apparently that's why he was having this complete nervous reaction and shitting himself to death in our bathroom uh. So I thought he was a homeless guy, but it turns out he has a really nice pickup truck out in the parking lot, but he looks like a bum, kind of because he has a big beard and he's got a few missing teeth, but he's got this really nice pickup truck. He mm -hmm. calls for a tow truck to get his truck because he's not sure what he's going to do if he gets in his truck. I'm like, okay, and I don't want to hurt anyone. I'm like, oh, man. So then I'm going to I'm thinking I'll give the guy a sandwich and just get him out of here. And then uh, mm -hmm. he comes up and orders a sandwich at the window. I'm like, okay, and like he pays for it with a credit card. I'm like, oh shit, so this guy's actually not homeless, and that really is his truck, and he really did call a tow truck, which is not cheap, especially mm -hmm. for a big-ass truck like that, a flatbed tow truck. Yeah. So they took his pickup away, and then he tipped me 20 bucks and was like totally apologizing. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man, it was really embarrassing. I'm sorry for all that crap in the bathroom and all that. I'm sorry. I'm like, all right, yeah, dude, like your wife <laughs> fucked you over, your girlfriend or whatever, I get you. Yeah, it's an unusual night, but, you know. <laughs> He's a kindred spirit, dude. Isn't that happening to you uh, all the time? Oh, yeah. Like, I always go everywhere. I need guys to help me wipe my ass. Yeah, you know? No, I mean, Actually, you're that would be you. That, That's you. That's what you do for a living, not me. But now I do, oh, too. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> We're, you and I are both caretakers. See, I didn't actually wipe his ass. I just handed him paper over the stall. I'm like, this is like oh, well. Seinfeld in reverse. Can you spare a square? I don't have a spare. To, I don't have a square to spare. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, of course you don't. I mean, some of us are are more kind, and uh, I'm an empath. <laughs> yeah. There's no such thing as empaths. But uh, so yeah. I don't know. It's so that was my a... my last day of work so far, and then it starts over tomorrow. So yeah, so does mine. Mine starts over. I don't know. Mine's it feels like it never ends. It like never ended because I've been working like double shifts and stuff. Like uh, like you know where uh uh, have you ever been like, or does this happen like where you're at home or something? Or, or you're about ready to fall asleep and you'll hear like a, like almost like a audio hallucination of like, you know, An maybe like the tail at work. Yeah, like maybe like the the door opening at work or you know, some kind of like noise the till makes and you just kind of hear it in your head. I have had that or things in my house that sound like that. Yeah, like, yeah, or like you something just catch like it. the computer, like an order pops up and it makes a bling noise, or the DoorDash, bling, ding, ding, ding. I've heard yeah, all of yeah. those at my house. 
yeah, I get that. I feel like once so. in a while, or you have the thing where uh, there's a show or a movie you're watching, and they have a phone like the one you have at work, and it has the exact same ring, and you're like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. So like, so one, is that what's going the, on? One of the residents, um, when when he kind of like needs attention for something, um, and he's like still in bed, you know, and this guy can't get get out of bed or anything like that. He starts whistling. Um, and I'll hear like a whistle and I'll be like, oh no, I got to go get, you know, so-and-so up or he might, you know, he, he the, the guy does it either if he's like messed himself, uh, or if he's masturbating, which is kind of a weird, uh, kind of thing, you know, whistling, you know. As we often Why? do, as we okay, all right, whatever. Well, listen, man, <laughs> it's, it's a traumatic brain injury. The guy, you know, kind of has like a, you know, the impulse control is sort of uh, off. You know what I mean? Okay. But yeah, so like I'll hear whistling, like right before I fall asleep, I might hear like a whistle, like I'm like oh, oh no. So it's it's just like you know how like you just you just work somewhere so long that it starts to kind of haunt you, you know, goes home with you. Anyways, that's all. That was very interesting. Well, I I thought you were leading up to something there. What's going on with that? Oh, that was it. I'm just getting that kind of like auditory hallucination stuff now. You know where everything like. Just random sounds like sound like work to me, you know. So I guess it wasn't that interesting. I'm sorry. Fuck. That was a terrible story. It was really bad. But what are you gonna do? You know. But, uh, well, anyways. what's new in metal news? What do you What do you got for me? I got nothing, man. Like uh, the only thing I can think of is like almost like a, a little bit of a disappointing thing. I kind of went on a, like a prog metal deep dive, just like for new, new prog metal bands. And I was just yeah. kind of disappointed because like, I got to admit, man, they all sort of sound the same. I'm not exactly, you know, well, I believe I've been saying things like that to you for some time now. Pal. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just sort of. Yeah, but every once in a while, something will stand out. So um, uh, the band that stood out is a band called uh, Lemon Shade, I think, or a Lemon Shade. Lemon it's Shade? Lumen Shade, I think. Lemon I don't know. Shade. Like Lemon Shade. Lemon Shade. While you're doing laundry? Yeah. Linen uh, cleaner. I think lemon shade is better. Maybe lemon lemon, lemon shade. shade. It was, yeah. And um, it was very, like, kind of citrusy music. Tart. Uh, it, no, it was, like, kind of a female-fronted prog metal, which, you know, it's kind of like a, a pretty, you know, that's kind of a thing, you know, these days seeing a lot of that female fronted but it was like really you really hooky. are and it's funny you brought that up like finish your point with that then i'll i'll tell you what no, I, I, I was just saying like the music was really cool and and interesting and and like the hooks like vocally was like really good vocal hooks you know um so the whole band is females no 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 just the just just, just the singer See, do they market themselves that way as female fronted prog? Probably, you know, because why do wouldn't they? Or they you know? Assuming. Well, no, I mean, they don't say, hey, we're female fronted prog. I mean, but, but I, clearly she's like a feature of the band. You know what I mean? Like that's an See, emphasis. Why is on, that? that? That's that's my whole because thing. Because she's a like, front lady. Okay, well, so what? Women want to be so accepted. What? Why? Why do we then have to still fuss over them because they're a girl doing something guys usually do? Why? Why is that? I, a big I don't deal? think they're fussing over. I don't think they're fussing over them. It's just like 
Look, if, my if whole you point have... is like, why I mention it then? It's just she's in the band, like Bolt Thrower. I always bring up Patient she's... Zero of Women in Metal, Joe Venture Bolt Thrower. It's like she doesn't ask her attention, she just plays her fucking music. Yeah. It's not a big deal. But but you should you you can you should capitalize on it and market it. You know, it's 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 something that is compelling about that band, right? Um I get you know, what maybe, you mean, and that's true, and I'm never going to not look at a beautiful girl no matter where they are, but at the same time, with metal, it's kind of different with me, you know, like the girls in Crypto are good looking, but it's either uh, they're a good looking gimmick band because they're girls and they're hot, or they're a death metal band or whatever they are, and they, they jam. Uh, okay. Have you heard them? I actually, to be honest with you, have not heard them. I, I'm not bagging on them either <laughs> way, I'm just saying. You should check them out, dude. They're They're legit, well, man. They're actually... Get this, they're coming here with Carcass and Hatebreed and some other squashy death metal band. Imagine that in October. Hatebreed. Should go. Eh, yeah, I'm not, not, dude. Hatebreed. I'm not huge. That's going to bring a lot of douchebags into the audience. Carcass is probably not going to play anything I want to hear from the first two records, and I don't know the other two. Oh, bands. we're back on this, man. Hey, they're not. You know they're not. Why go pay to see a band when you think they might play something from their old shit and they're probably not? Then you, you're you just like, okay. Because bands are creative people and they want to play their new stuff. And we should well, definitely encourage and respect that in a band. Don't you think? No. Look at Cold Lake. That was new at one time and I hated it and I still do. So. Well, is he... You lost Family Feud, Mark. Oh, man. I'm... <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't have my wits about me to 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 do this battle with you right now. You never had wits. What are you talking about? Shit. You have twits, not wits. I do not. <laughs> it's just... Well, anyways, what I'm getting at here is, uh, I've been, as you know, I like wrestling, and I know you bag on me all the time for that, because wrestling is yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah. talk about yes, a gimmick, is. dude. <laughs> Well, it is, it is, but that's the thing is all these years wrestling has been kept behind the scenes, but now with the internet, the magic has been like told. It's like release. Everybody knows that wrestling is scripted. I mean, you kind of knew anyway, but but here's the I, thing I, is I, they I, never I knew had, well before the internet, dude. Well, I, yeah, okay, but I'm just saying now it's like a given, and really, it's not even the internet. It's ever since the '90s. Uh, wrestling, a few things happened in the world of wrestling that were like real life dramatic things behind the scenes that leaked out into the real world, but it made wrestling so much better. But because of that, you mm -hmm. couldn't turn back. You know, the magic was gone. It was real life from then on. And now it's just like, well, you're trying to put on that facade. It's just like black metal bands these days when they wear corpse paint and talk about burning churches and killing people. They don't really do it. It's not like in Norway where they kind of were like crazy teenage kids who oh, tried to put their money where their mouth was, but they, they're not. <laughs> Yes. Oh, I said, yeah, those posers. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's the point. Is like there are people acting like this still, but you know they're not serious. It's like, okay, fuck you. You're not scaring me. But I brought up wrestling because they have now, it, back then in the 90s when wrestling was hot, like everybody watched that, even normal people who didn't usually watch it, like The Rock, Stone Cold, like the NWO, all those famous wrestlers. Now it's like they had they didn't have very many women wrestlers then. Now they have women wrestlers as a matter of course, and they all all organizations have like a few dozen women wrestlers. But the problem is not many of them are very good. And a big reason why is because most of them treat it like a fashion thing and they're out there showing off their outfits and making all these little slinky moves and there are a few who kick ass. Like I said, I told you many shows ago on this show, I mentioned Rhea Ripley was one. There have been a few others, but for the most part, they're just kind of like window dressing. They're just kind of there to say that we have female wrestlers and they don't really. Or alternatively, they'll have some girls come out and like really fuck each other up with like chairs and like glass and they're bleeding and no one wants to see that either. But they're forcing the issue because they're girls like, look, girl wrestlers. Like, so what? That's my point. It just got me thinking about metal again because there's a lot of metal is kind of the same dichotomy. It's like there's bands who are just there and they go with this gimmick that they're all female, or they at least people do that, not the bands about them. Or there's bands where they're they have girls or they're all girls and they just play. Cool. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm I just I just 
was thinking here's, about here's that. my here's my thought on that um i don't think i know enough to be able to make that call on whether i think a band is like a, a gimmick or not you know what i mean well, like in all fairness might, there might even be a band many. i don't like yeah i think most of them I'm just I would saying say it's like, kind of like it can be misconstrued that way, possibly, I guess, is what I'm really saying. There aren't very many bands who do that, per se, but... But you misconstrue it at kind of your own risk, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, as, as yeah, being a dick. You know, so I, I, I tend to just, like, err on the side of, yeah, they're probably legit, you know? I, even if I'm, like, I'm not into it. But, uh... Well, we know, just I just put up um episode, I think, 35 or something recently. We were talking about Alanis Morissette playing God in the movie Dogma. And you and I went off on this big tangent about can a woman be God and all of this stuff. Then you told me stories about your crazy ex landlord that you went to counseling with, even though you weren't her her boyfriend. And oh God, yeah. Oh, man. I mean, it was You're bringing that up. Well, no, but I'm just saying it was all we talked about that before, and it was uh, you know a woman can be God, I think, and like uh, maybe maybe not, or maybe God's not any gender; it's just some being or consciousness, but. All that hey, aside, you know what? The, the fact that you're, you know, you're finally admitting that you believe in God is a. Uh, I am not I think that's anything. A, I never said I believed in this God. This is a breakthrough. Never you know, said that I you're contemplating it. And, Don't put words in my mouth. You know, I am the ultimate atheist. There will never be belief in God, unless you want to say it was some weird life form that people don't understand. That doesn't mean it's a God. So nice try. Yeah. You know, baby steps. Huh? Baby steps. Baby steps? Yeah. You're the baby here. It needs to believe in God, not me. You know, I didn't say it'd be easy. I only said it would be worth it. No, it wouldn't. I don't know. God is I bullshit. Don't. Religion is bullshit. Yeah. Uh, hey, if it works for you, that's great. Stay the fuck out of my yard with it, pal. Dude, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send a couple of uh, fresh... Fresh young man over to talk to you about a few things there. What, replace the ones I killed that you sent before? Oh. Don't be a fool. Could you? You're hard. (laughs) I'm as hard as Satan's horns. Now fuck off with your God bullshit. All right. Anyways. So here's here's another thing. Stripers best album against the law. That's a controversial take. I didn't really kill anybody, by the way, for those listening. Oh, by the way, it's uh, Medley Challenge. We have Mark working like a dog, Hanson, and J.R. Torino, the Master Butcher here. You were saying, Mark? The paper towel dispenser. Um, Oh, hell yeah. I was going to say, let's talk about the best Striper album, which is Uh, Against the Law. They don't have a best album. They don't have... It's the... Against the Law is the... uh, Is their... Uh, glam metal well not really glam metal it's like their their album where they kind of veered away from the power metal stuff and went more kind of like uh, skid row kind of style like gritty hard rock and uh, striper fans are not a fan you know they tend to it's like the animal eyes of the striper albums animal eyes was uh, a hated kiss album yeah was it a hated kiss album? No, not at all. It was uh, Asylum's the one that started their spiral downwards into glam. That's, and even that Asylum. one's not really hated as much as like as much as say Hot in the Shade and Crazy Nights. Those are like the weak, just pop synth pop like synthesizer like just radio hit friendly Kiss albums where it was just Paul Stanley because Gene was busy trying to be an actor. Who wants to be lonely? And it's funny, and we've had this conversation. Oh, 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 yeah. I love that song. Have you seen that video? Yeah, of course. With Bruce falling dude. upwards out of the pool, playing his guitar. Yeah, dude. But uh, the Kiss albums people hate the most, though, are Dynasty and Unmasked. And it blows my mind. Unmasked is weak, but it's good for what it is. Like late 70s, early 80s, soft rock, that, pop-ish. With like a pop. slight, yeah, it's really good. Edgy, like almost disco or a new, fresh, new feel for that time. And it's a good album. Yeah. I just make fun of it because it's kind of a pussy album, considering... They were missing the boat with heavy metal, but Dynasty, 
get so much shit and it's just one disco song on there the rest of it's such mm-hmm. a good rock album and there's nothing wrong with i was made for loving you either it's a cool song but i like it. it's a uh, it's a, that's one of my favorite Kiss albums for many different reasons. The album, it stands up. It's a solid kick-ass rock album. It's from my childhood and like anything, you name it. It's awesome. So yeah. there were like black metal dudes I knew were trying to give me shit by posting those videos on my page. Like, oh yeah, you like Kiss? What about this? I'm like, fuck yeah, I love that. They didn't have anything to say. I'm like, yeah, good. Keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you were saying... Uh, what were you saying that brought that up? I don't even remember. That the kiss, uh, that you said it was their animal. Oh, Striper. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, so that's a great album. Tangent, but you were saying it's their, it was their <laughs> asylum then or something. Yeah, it's or or it's their it's their cold lake. Oh, there you uh, go. There's the measuring stick. I think that, that I think that's that's the reference we need to kind of uh, stick with. I think Tom Warrior, if he ever album. hears this show, is not going to like us very much. No, I don't think anybody's going to like us very much. Probably um, not. We're a couple of fucking assholes. Well, I mean... That's okay. Fuck them. I'm like the voice of reason. Trying to keep kind of keep you uh, from just going off the rails. I'm the tangential crazy crazy train driver. Can't You're the exaggerate. You're experience. like the, uh, the hyperbolic... <laughs> you know. but i'm not hyperbolic i have something to say it's not just hyperbole oh, but man. anyways striper comma yeah um they covered uh, uh earth one and fire shining star on it it was really good and you love earth wind and fire we all know how much love you love it. that band i do dude i love that soul music i like earth wind and fire they're a good band earth, wind and fire Seven tower of power fun. Oh yeah, average white band. That's some of my favorite music outside of metal. That uh, funk from the '70s is like my absolute like favorite stuff. That groove, all that stuff's Just, good. I love all that old, uh, all that old like funk and like soul music. Like most of it, like like some of it gets really deep into it, and it's just like yeah. I'm sorry. Can't quite get into that, but like the Brothers Johnson, the Gap Band. Oh man, you have it's funny, Earth, dude. Fire, hot. It's funny that you, dude. This is wild. Like, for some reason, this this song, and I was even singing it at work. It was a, a deep cut Brothers Johnson song, um, "Land of Ladies." Would you like to come with me to Land of Ladies? I was totally singing that song at work today. It's off uh, there. Someone heard you? No, no one heard me. Um, a lot of people heard me, but they didn't really. They didn't know what it was. Nobody likes me there. Bunch um, of posers. Right. They don't know their fucking soul and funk. <laughs> they don't. It's, and it breaks my heart, man. So, yeah, I, but, I like See, that's funny, too, because at work, like, if, you know, like you said, hyperbole, I do do have the hyperbolic reaction at work only just because it's just the gut reaction. Like, like these kids listen to rap and it's not even good rap. You know, it's not N.W.A. Mm-hmm. Ice-T like or anything modern. Akin right, to it's that. the mumbly it's, stuff. Yeah. It's that. And just it's like some guy mumbling or just whining through his cell phone with a filter on it. And that's it. There's like no nothing. It's not even about like anything it's not being oppressed or hit by cops or like bitches or no- nothing mm-hmm. it's just some guy whining about whatever the fuck and there's a few that are like about drugs and stuff and whatever but i mean it's this is not what it was but i guess you can say that about any kind of music but i go off on my tangents about metal like metal or death and mm-hmm. people just like get so like obsessed like i'm like why are you guys getting so pissed off did you write this song like, no. I'm like, well, then why are you getting so mad? I'm not talking shit on you. You don't need to get all butt hurt. Like, what if I make fun of metal? I'm like, go fucking ahead. Make fun of it all you want. I don't want people to like metal. That's why it's elitist music. <laughs> yeah. Well, get this. Um, here, this will this will be um, the fun story. Um, uh oh. I I I had to go home and change my shirt because one of the admins didn't like it. I was wearing a Cannibal Corpse shirt at work. 
Oh, and come on, man. Poor taste. Yeah. Right? What one was it? It was, it's just like kind of that? a... Well, it has... It, it says butchered a birth on the back, but there's no, like, graphic violence or anything like that. It's just... It's just writing. They just said well, that? It has, they like, didn't like that? Well, and it has, like, the little baby skeleton on the back. Yeah. Which, like, look... I it kind of is maybe a little bit in poor taste, but man, I you know you can't work where I work and have any kind of like you can't be a wimp, dude. Like you know we're dealing with people that you know have like you know these injuries that give them like no impulse control, you know, so they have behavioral problems. You know, can be severely inappropriate and. And, but it was an admin, like it was some admin lady, you know, and th- those guys couldn't be more out of touch with, with anything that's going on there, you know, you know, we're understaffed. I'm working on my second double shift, you know, taking care of these people, you know, but her pearl clutching is more important, you know. Well, that's how a lot of people are, especially religious types. They feel like what they think is the way things just, should be, and they go out of their way to make sure that that is what happens. That's totally what's going on. No, nah, right to me, I don't think it's religious. This is, this is like admin types. Well, I you mean, know? it's any, it's people. They're like general, the worst people. You'll find a lot of people who are like that are like the kind who fear retribution from God. Not at least they say they do. I don't know, but. Yeah, this, Anyways, yeah, there are always going to be people like this that. Is someone who thinks they're God. You know, just looking to be offended. You know, that's all. Yeah, and we've covered that many times on this show. Um, mm-hmm. Speaking of offensive topics, here's another thing I wanted to talk about is, have you heard about this whole thing with Kanye West and Burzum? Oh, I think we touched on it. Like, wasn't he, I mean, it was just, he was we wearing really a Burzum shirt. We didn't really get that because we were talking about, we mentioned Kanye before, but... Uh, since that time, and I, you know, we talked about Burzum a lot. Like, is it okay to like his music, even though he says shit that's, you know, essentially just racist in the in the press or just on the internet? It yeah. makes you feel guilty for liking it. Or if you did like his music in the past before he ever did that, we've covered that at length. But apparently, <laughs> um, Kanye West wearing a Burzum shirt, we talked about that. But now. Apparently, they're working together and Kanye West has a new album out. I forget what it's called like it says darkness or something like that on it or or something vultures or but it has the burzum font like the little scrawly castle font thing and the picture looks like a bleak burzum painting cover landscape like a foggy dead trees really? grayscale like gray artwork it looks like that it totally Are you looks sure like this a isn't like a internet like troll or like a joke no, no 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 it's it's his new album it looks like that and i'm even seeing people wearing the shirt coming into the restaurant now with it it's He's got a thing going on with Burzum, and he All thinks right. Kanye's a genius, and yada, yada. I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm sure it's got something to do with we don't like Jews and that kind of shit. So, but um, I don't know. I don't. I haven't heard the music. It's just, I'm sure it's the same old shit from him, but it's Kanye West's new album, but it looks like a Burzum record. Apparently, he's embracing Burzum, and Burzum's embracing him back. Like, do you know anything about that? Apparently not. Well, the, the world is finally healing. What? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's his way of like. Maybe this is uh, the way they're both going to redeem themselves with the worst people in the world. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. But yeah, we'll see what. Uh, uh, so far, it's already out of the news. But I mean, it was just. It's been so long since we recorded it. Yeah, it was. That was probably about two or three months ago now. But yeah, it was. Uh, Definitely, like, um, it was a brow razor because we were we were talking about that shit. And then the thing came up with uh, Kanye wearing a Burzum shirt while we were discussing both those different artists separately. And now this, you know, I'm like, what the fuck? What are they? Maybe they're listening. <laughs> I don't, like I said, you know, maybe this is, this is the crossover. <laughs> uh, maybe not the one we want, but the one we need. You know, to be oh, honest, God. I never really. Exp- I'll go ahead and say it right now. I think it's okay to like Burzum's music. 
Well, we came to that conclusion before because it was just many different facets of like, should I feel guilty? You know, and I even said, hey, I liked this shit before he even started opening his mouth. It was way back then before he killed anybody. I listened to his music. So it's kind of a habit now. And he does make some good metal, but it's not like something I listen to every fucking day. It's just when it's fall time and it's dark out and like dingy and cloudy, I could put on a few songs every now and then. It's not like this life thing I got to have, like Kiss, you know, it's not like that, but... Yeah, Kiss is life, yeah. So, I mean, it, but I, that again brought up the topic of, like, what do you do? Because how would you know, like, anyone you like, like whether they're an actor, a football player, a musician, the guy at your everybody, grocery store ringing you up, or, like, at a restaurant, everybody's how got, do you know everybody's they're not got, thinking that? Yeah, everybody's what? got, everybody's got skeletons. You know? Well, that's what I mean. It's like some people broadcast them and it's bad, but uh, at the same time, like, like our artists are like old, like classical music artists or old art painters, and like they all did oh, that yeah. shit. Like, what they do we? Awful. What do you do? Do you cancel everybody? I mean, fuck. We've all said they they're trying to stupid yeah. shit. Like, if you say stupid shit and you're canceled, then where's the world gonna go? Like, everybody's gonna stay home. Like, <laughs> what what well, do you do? I mean, my my hope is that it just like it's it's a uh, an unsustainable like culture you know what i mean it's well we said as much it's true but at yeah. the same time it's just like you do feel like i keep thinking i feel really bad or guilty for liking burism's music and it's even then it's only like a few songs on his first four albums it's not like die hard i love all of his stuff and i gotta have it like if i was presented with a choice like either you go to jail or, or you know some righteous being will strike you down so you either like his music or you don't i guess i'll go without it but it just doesn't seem right you know it's there's another band who gets a lot of shit like that too i don't remember if we talked about it but they're called death in june have you ever heard of them uh -oh. it's a old it's sort of a goth band but not really but they're like a folk music band but they're in the goth spectrum they've they're kind of like lumped in with like christian death and bands mm -hmm. like that and it's like a mostly acoustic guitar. There's some trumpets, some keyboards, a little bit of guitar, and it's like vocals, like the guys, like oh, like just a deep voice. It's kind of like uh -huh. it's cool music. It's something different. It's alternative, but it's they use the Tottenkopf, the Skull and Crossbones Deathhead that was used by the SS. That's their logo. But lyrically, That's they true. sing about things happening in Germany during World War II, all the time. So okay. that doesn't necessarily mean that they're Nazis, but there's like a big controversy about them, whether or not they're Nazis. And just because they sing about that, as we've said many times on this show, that doesn't mean that they're Nazis because the band sings about World War II. And the yeah. singer, Douglas P., is, happens to be homosexual, which doesn't you know, negate anything about him being a Nazi or not, but it kind of makes it a little more questionable because most... I don't know. And some people have said the Nazis themselves were like closet gays too. I don't know, whatever. But a lot of them were, you know. That's I don't what know. I heard. But anyways, that's the big controversy. Like it was uh, Death in June's apparently lumped in with being Nazis, and I, the guy, of course, never says no, we're not. Yes, we are. He just kind of ignores it all, which in a way is kind of clever because it gets a lot of attention to him, but not necessarily good attention. But he's an old fat man now. I mean, they were a band in the 80s. They were around in like the late 70s, 80s. Same thing. It's like, well, <laughs> for the most part, I don't get anything that they're like talking about, like killing people. But it's more about I loved you at this time and yada, 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 whatever. Like we drank wine together like with the stars yeah, in 1942. Depressing. Huh. You never heard about that? No, no. It sounds sounds like a band I'd not really be into, which is gothic folk music. Uh, but, it's hard uh, to explain. It's like mostly acoustic guitar, but they do have this like nice baroque kind of rich, folky like dark folky sound, and it's like gothy. But it's if you like goth, you'll probably tend to like that band, but. You know, like I said, like the last show we put up, like I meant one of the shows we put up, I can't remember, but Susie and the Banshees, they're a super famous goth band. She used to wear a swastika armband on stage. I think so did Iggy Pop, didn't he? Once here and there. 
a few of those guys like kind of but they didn't wear it because they were being nazis they were they were punk rocking and they were wearing it ironically as the kids say these days it was like a statement it was like anti-establishment so they were in your face with something that you didn't like like the sex pistols do that too or something uh probably i don't i don't know i'm not a big pistols guy but never mind so anyway oh man so have you heard know. about? Well, I don't know either. Yeah, heard about? Have you heard about this Pestilence AI artwork thing on their new album? Yeah, I think we talked a little bit about it. Like, did we? I don't, I it's been a while it. since we recorded. I can't remember if we covered that one or not. But apparently, they they gave in since we talked about. It, they gave in and changed the cover. <laughs> really? What do you think like, about that? Well, I guess. Is AI I mean, art that bad? I mean, that everybody demanded no, they change I, the cover? I think it's like the principle of it, you know? I think people just want, um, I don't know, we want things made by humans, you know, especially when it comes to art, or at least a, a few of us do, you know? And I think there's going to be, it seems like there's going to be like a backlash to this AI-generated content, which I think is a good thing, you know? I would, I'd rather have like, I mean, AI could probably make some of the most beautiful music and I just don't want to hear it from a robot. Well, we've talked about the music, but what about the art? Like, what do you think about that? Because I'm an artist. Yeah, and any any kind of art. Yeah. I mean, I think AI can be useful. You can like, uh, you know, use it maybe to enhance something. I don't know. Um. But at the end of the day, like I, I want, you know, the creative human element, even if it's not as perfect. You know what I mean? Well, I get that. Um, I, I've used one of those AI things on my phone, and I've, you know, done some cool stuff on there. And like, I might even use some of that for like an album cover for like one of my own just industrial projects I do in my room. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's not that bad, but it's. I guess they're viewing it as taking money, food out of the mouths of artists. But um, oh, now you know how musicians feel about fucking Spotify and the internet and everything is free. So sorry. Yeah. Welcome to the club, guys. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I don't have a problem with it as art, but uh, I've heard that there are certain ways they go about it and it's like sketchy. Like they'll take pieces of multiple pieces of artwork on the internet and then compile that and that's what you get. So it's. So I don't really know how it works. And there's supposedly better programs that don't do that. So, but yeah, I'm, not, I'm they, not exactly, I'm not sure exactly what the, what it's all about, to be honest. Yeah, apparently uh, the backlash was so hard on that, that album uh-huh. that they were forced to just change it to new artwork. And I haven't even seen it like actually yet, but uh, let me see if I can find that. I mean, the, the, did you see the original cover? It was like their four faces, but it was like skulls or dead people or something or. Yeah, I think I did. I, I mean, I don't know. Like I think what the concern is or, or what I think worries people is that, you know, if you, if you would actually AI generate a, an album cover, is any of the music done the same way, you know, like, so I don't, I don't know. So. I, I think it just, it calls into question like the uh, integrity of the artist. No, oh, I don't, I don't think that's fair assumption of that, especially for metal bands, especially Pestilence. Those guys like to play. They're technical as fuck. Uh, yeah, it looks I'm like, I'm looking here. It looks like they had the old cover. It was like their four faces and a kind of washed out almost cartoony like typically ai thing and now i've got that uh what's that thing that mechanism that's on the front of the spheres cover like that's on there and it has a picture right. of each band member which it well, looks you like know and maybe that's not bad because they're they're using their own you know what i mean like their own uh sort of uh kind of their signature thing, you know, if they're, if they're, you know, doing callbacks to like their previous, like the testimony of the ancients album cover. 
Yeah, actually, like, that's where that, that thing like, started. That's huh? kind of like their thing, you know. Like everybody has like the symbol. It's almost like their mascot, you know, um, or the Dream Theater symbol, or the what's another one? Like you know, bands that have like kind of like a I don't know, like so, like a symbol, like the Derek Riggs, you know, little thing on on the Iron Maiden albums, you know, that's on yeah. every. Derek Riggs. Uh, yeah, we talked about that on the show. That's uh, it's really funny how that worked out. It's the letters D R, but he put a little face under it. But it's also the symbol for iron, which is a circle with an arrow pointing down and a line coming off the side of it. Oh, I so know. it's the symbol for iron with the D R worked into it, and then he put a line underneath it like a mouse, so it looks like a little face. So there's like a little yeah. triple entendre there. <laughs> We talked about that on a previous show, but yeah, like I know what you mean, or Judas Priest has the battalion sigil and Yeah. So I but yeah, I mean that that's on the cover now. It looks like it's painted and then there's just like a picture of each band member playing live. So it's just like photographs, at least from what I can see here, or unless it's like a painting or something, but it looks like a real picture of it. Hmm. I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I, don't know. I, don't, I, I don't know if that's too big of a deal, you know, but as long as the music's still speaking, you know. But I, you know, I, I think it's one of those things that is so new, you know, nobody knows how this is really going to play out. So it's still, everybody's still trying to kind of, you know, come to terms with it in a way. I don't know. It seems like, uh, I don't know. Hard to say. Hard to say. Like, because I, I have to be honest, I'm an artist. I went to school to pursue art. Mm -hmm. I'm a born artist. I have talent for drawing. My dad could paint. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I don't think AI is that big of a deal, but I think there's some cool stuff you can do with it. But Or you could, like, use that as a template and then doctor it up some more. But I don't think it's totally anathema to anything. It's like, there's some cool shit that I've done. And this is just me fucking around on my phone, of course. I wouldn't like frame something that I did and try to pass it off in an art show. But I mean, for an album cover for like a techno thing I did in my bedroom, fuck yeah. Why not? What's the problem? You know, is that wrong? Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, like, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to say, you know, cause I don't know. I'm, I've, so I let's say you, like you and your band, you had a band, like a parent band and like, they wanted to do an AI artwork and it looked like that, like that weird kind of glossy, cartoonish comic bookish painting thing of of you guys would you be cool with that or would you care i would i, I wouldn't i'd be all right with it like i'm not like uh not really married to anything you know what i mean so you're down like, I, don't, I don't know if i would have a problem with it to be honest with you but um but i could see why other people might you know just, well, that's interesting you know, because that's, that's like a purist point of view in a way and mm -hmm. i understand that you don't want to take money out of uh you know or take work away from artists but like i said hey welcome to the club man musicians and record labels we've been there already <laughs> like it's sort of not because yeah. of ai but you know it's like now you're bitching okay now you see my point but at the same time it's i do have a lot of artist friends who are absolutely 100 percent pissed off about the existence of AI and I can see their point but at the same time like I said it's like for fucking around your phone and you have a cool phone wallpaper okay not a no big deal but maybe uh, uh, to me like I, I, as a writer I get a little worried you know like you know if AI is going to take over the writing like writing scripts, writing stories, if everything's going to be like, I don't like the idea of that one bit, you know, so. Is that something that's going on right now? Oh, I guarantee it is. Are you just thinking that or do you know that for a fact? I'm just, I'm just thinking it, but I, I, come on, you know, like look at the Hollywood movies. I wouldn't be surprised if they're using AI generated scripts already, you know, for some of the garbage that's coming out. So, well, they might be, but I mean, at this point, Hollywood's like beating a dead horse and like regurgitating the same shit over. In fact, it's funny you brought that uh -huh. up because I was looking 
I'm like, how many times are they going to remake Godzilla? And how many times are they going to redo Batman? It's like, fuck, give it up. Can't you think of anything new? It's like, oh, we're remaking Willy Wonka. And I saw a commercial for a new Willy Wonka movie. And I'm like, fuck, how many times are they going to remake that? Can't someone come up with something new? And they don't. <laughs> I can't. Like, Hollywood is that's done, why man. I'm like, that, that's I think why they'll probably be like, well, let's let AI do it, you know? Well, if you do AI, I, 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 now I'm going to make a different point, like, and be a hypocrite. But it seems like if you do it AI, they're probably going to do exactly that. They're going to have just a couple of different things pulled from a couple of different movies and squash them together, and it's going to be no different and maybe make less sense. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't know if they're doing that or not, but I guess it's a possibility. So. Have you listened to Swing Out Sister lately? Um, you know, I I have because it's um one of my alarms to wake up because I can't wake up to like death metal or anything like that, so I have to have something a little. Well, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. You should put on something gentle, but that's gonna get you up. Like I put on some industrial sometimes. I tried dark ambient. I have a CD player alarm clock, and I tried dark ambient because I thought that'll be nice to wake up to, but it, I actually just slept through it, so that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> oh, <yes>. <laughs> you <laughs> got to put on something like more like Skinny Puppy or something. It's not quite brutal and noisy, but it's kind of a little bit like, hey, fucker, get up. But it's not like, you know, Napalm Death or something like that. So have you been to any good shows lately? Probably not. I haven't. No, I haven't. <laughs> Does anybody yeah. tour out there, like in Wyoming? Because I've, I've. I think we looked it up. There's like there was like a kind of a weird like extreme metal fest that was up here. I can't remember what it was called, but. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Not I went nothing to, really. I went to see. Uh, I want to get your opinion on something, too. I went to see Frontline Assembly, one of my favorite industrial bands, yes. with Gary Newman. And that would be Gary Newman, who sings Here in My Car. Yeah. But Gary Newman is like a huge like dark wave guy these days. He's not like a one-hit wonder from the 80s. He's like this massive dark wave guy, and he puts on a really, really good show. They came before with Ministry. I, we talked about it, and it was the same two bands, Frontline Assembly and Gary Newman, opened the show, and they were so good. Mm-hmm. I told you Frontline Assembly has the drummer that kind of looks like you. Well, he doesn't look like you anymore. <laughs> well, I was watching him this time. He's like skinnier and he shaved his eyebrows. He has long stringy black hair and he's got like, he looks like Fenris from Dark Throne actually, like during his yeah. black metal heyday. <laughs> well, anyways, um, Frontline Assembly, and I want your opinion on this, is like something happened with the microphone. So the guy was kind of pissed off and he went over to the side and swapped microphones. Then he walks mm -hmm. back over and kicks over the mic stand, sings some more, picks up the mic stand, and you hear the mic picked up what he said. He said, this fucking stage, something, something, this fucking stage. And they only played for about 45 minutes, and they have a habit of taking a picture of themselves in front of the crowd at every show. They didn't do that. I'm mm -hmm. kind of thinking, like, you kind of, I mean, the picture is not a big deal, but it was like, clearly they were in a bad mood. And I'm like, well, fuck, why you don't? give us the short end of the stick for that in the audience we paid to see you just because the stage sucked i mean what do you think about that i know we've seen this in metal a hundred times oh yeah we're just kind of the the prima donna sort of i mean i don't know sort of like, like that yeah i got everybody say, has I an off shocked night. because he looked pissed so like the energy coming off of them that night wasn't good whereas before mm. when i saw them at ministry they were like really into it it was everything was cool and this time, this show it was like it was a good show, and they were on it musically. But you just you, there's like an energy, like they didn't want to be there, and like and then the thing with the microphone, and he kicked the mic stand over, and he said something, something, this fucking stage. I'm like, oh wow, like sorry, you know, we only paid to see you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What, what do like... you think? I mean, do you think that's even if he didn't mean it towards the audience, like we kind of or I took it kind of like, well, fuck you guys. And they only played for 40 minutes. I don't know if that was their intent anyway, but it seems kind of short, you know, and they're only those two bands. Seems to me like they played longer last time when there were three bands, so. That's a good question. Like, I, 
I mean, Do I you think feel like every, that was like a, a good way to handle that. Like the he kind of. No, it's not a good way to handle it. But I, once again, like man, I don't know what it'd be like to, to be a touring musician, and have like just, you know, you just get in moods, you know, or or. Well, you were you a have a bad musician. night, you know, and it's and it's your responsibility to, you know give them the show but you know there's those times you're probably just not into it not val i'm not justifying what he's doing or what well, he i did. get that but i mean you gotta know i mean it's if that's what you do you yeah. can't just be a dick one night and then like fuck that no. i mean i guess that's kind of how it is that's always how it's been but yeah i kind of felt like a little bit put off i'm like man they're giving off a really bad energy and he like just didn't seem happy about that i didn't even look at the crowd while he was singing and it was just seemed like it was perfunctory, you know, and they didn't play for very long. I'm assuming they'd at least play for an hour, but they didn't. They played for like 40 minutes and they're like, fuck, that's lame. And the Gary Newman, conversely, or alternatively, he came out and the show was awesome. He put on like probably one of the tightest shows I've ever seen him do. Like people were screaming like, yeah, they came out and did an encore and he could tell he was really overwhelmed. He was like, thank you. Thank you. I love you guys. Thank you. And. I was like, wow, that was a sharp contrast to the way Frontline Assembly conducted themselves. It was crazy. Maybe it was like sour grapes or something from Frontline that they're not getting the. the it, Gary I thought Newman that love. too. I thought that too, but they got a pretty good reaction. But it wasn't, you know, as crazy as Gary Newman. But he was the headliner of the show, first of all. Yeah. And Frontline Assembly is not quite as popular as Gary Newman in terms of like the average person. You know, like they're a big deal to underground people like me. And they got a good review, they got a good reaction, but for the most part, they kind of didn't have that energy. Like they weren't really welcoming. He didn't really look at the audience. He didn't really talk to anybody. They just played song, song, song. And then halfway through the show, that thing happened and it was just kind of went weird from there. And so what do they expect? Yeah. I mean, am I, I reading too much into it or what do you think? I mean, you know, they might've just had an off night, like just, you know, bus breaks down, whatever, you know, like, Maybe even stuff happening, you know, at home. It could have been kids. like catering or something too. Cause I know I've told you that story with Mike Kimball when he used to live or when after he did live here, he went off to be in Dying Fetus. They came back and played a show. Mm -hmm. And one of the other bands they were with, Divine Empire, kept yelling out on stage about how great the catering was. So I asked Mike after the show, I'm like, Why was that guy talking about the catering so much? Was it awesome? And he's like, Fuck no. I'm like, what? And he's like, they gave us a Dixie cup, like Dixie cups and a pitcher of water. We didn't have any food, any soda, any beer, nothing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so I'm there. I'm thinking maybe it was something like that. I, I don't know, but it was at the depot. I would assume the depot would like not treat bands that shitty, but I don't oh, know. They would. would they? Yeah, I don't the know. The depot kind of has a bad reputation. I'm not sure why. It wasn't like the nicest venue I've ever been in, but it was a perfect size one for what we saw, you know? Mm. But yeah, um, yeah, it was weird. Uh -huh. It was definitely a weird energy that night. And like the depot kind of had a weird, dark energy to it as well. I'm not sure what that is. And speaking of which, um, do you remember the old uh, Pompadour downtown in Salt Lake? Yeah, that the controversy now is like the owner is like, oh, you heard it about down. that? Did you hear about that? Uh, it's yeah, funny because I was stuff, down there know. at the, the cookie place. Um, Crumble? Ruby Snap. There's Ruby Snap cookies, is right there next to the, next to the Pompadour or sanctuary as it was known later yeah. and uh I, I looked at it when i was walking back to my car i bought some cookies i'm like look at that it's all boarded up there's graffiti on it that's fucking sad man mm -hmm. there was a for sale sign and then a few weeks later i saw and i posted on facebook about it how sad that was and a few weeks later someone else posted about it and it was like being demolished yeah so what happened? I guess the guy who owned the building like tried to sell it, and then he he or what? What what was that? Yeah, or he wants to develop it or something like that, and the city's not letting him because they want it as like a historical landmark. Which to me, like I don't know. I'm sorry, but if you if you buy a property, you do what the hell you want. You know, if there's an old building on it, even if it has historical value, it's not. You know. It's not anybody else's place to say what, you know, you do with your own property. I know, but it's like everybody in the city was saying, like, come on, man. It's like a it's like a landmark. But I, I see your point. But at the same time, it's like that kind of sucks because it, it is really is like an old 
historic building. It was a church, but it's also been like many things to many people. It was the fucking yeah. music club a couple of times over. And yeah, yeah. Um, it was like uh, actually it was like a Buddhist monastery most recently. Really? Did you know that? I didn't know that. I know a girl who does uh, tarot card readings and stuff, and that's where she uh, was at. And I went down there one day, and I met like. Uh, I can't remember who it was, somebody that's popular in the Buddhist circles, like worldwide, but he was there and I, I met the guy. I'm like, okay, yeah, hi. Dalai Lama? No, not him. But I told my friend Shar, who is uh, into that stuff, and she was like, oh my God, you met him? And I was like, yeah, but I. I oh, Ram Das? Like, who? Ram Das? Rob Zombie? Ram Das. He's uh, like I do not guru. remember, actually. I don't remember. It was an older Asian gentleman. That's all I can say. I don't remember. That was years ago. But, um, but yeah, he was a very nice guy. It was just that was the last thing I've seen that building used for. Since then, it's just been sitting there, abandoned. It's too bad. Yeah. Well, and and that's the thing, though. I mean, it's just been sitting there. Maybe that guy's like, well, I, let me do something with it. And then the city's like, no. Well, that's true. I see your point. But at the same time, I think maybe if you own a building like that, you kind of have somewhat of an obligation, especially in a city that doesn't have that much going on, to like restore it and maybe do something nice with it. Like I don't know. I mean, put shops in it. That's what like his plan was. Yeah. Or... yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just, you know, an old building. If they yeah, tore that old... down just to put up apartment buildings, then yeah, it, he should be fucking like tarred and feathered. That's bullshit. Yeah, you know what he should have done is just uh, accidentally burn it down like every other old building, you know, downtown that suddenly sprouts a new apartment complex. Yeah, that's funny you say that because uh, that that has happened around where I'm at in the Sugar House, like once or twice, yeah. like things have burned down well, mysteriously, and I'm like, huh, really? Oops. Well, I guess <laughs> we'll build our, you know, nobody. Nobody believes that it's there. actually what happened either. That's what's funny about it. They're all like, oh, yeah, that was bullshit. Oh, yeah, because it was in the city, you know. City's in on it. They're in on it. They're in cahoots. Like, it, government must be destroyed. But that's for a different Oh, time. boy, here we go. <laughs> that's for another day. So I got uh, another topic for you. It's really nothing that like a topic really but i've got a guy you know the band stygian dark who's a seven inch i just released not too long ago huh? has the singer from benediction on it yeah it's one of the last ones i did like this last seven inch record it's like clear with blood uh, blood red and black splatter in it really heavy death metal it's good old school death metal well, anyway the bass player of that band happens to be uh, the owner of a record label overseas in the netherlands uh -huh. And uh, we've been talking, and I now officially have a distributor in Europe. All right. Ding, ding, ding. Because I told him, I said, dude, I, I have, I'm not selling shit. Like, I, I tried Plastic Head, and they've done nothing but put my shit online. That's actually diminished sales. He's like, well, fuck, let's, let's do this. And so now I'm selling his stuff over here, and he's selling my stuff over there. So now you're going to see Slaughterhouse Records with Doc Records, D-O-C. That's his nickname is Doc so, um, yeah, we have a partnership, awesome. so it's going to get my music out to uh, unsuspecting the, ears over there. The in Euro Europe. European. It's about, yeah, well, and I think your stuff kind of caters almost more towards the European audience, you know? Well, it does, of course. Indeed. So, nice. yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Um I, uh, he's got quite a few bands out. He's got a lot of vinyl, a lot of nice vinyl. There's uh, more popular bands like the band Occult, uh, mm -hmm. his own band, Stygian and Dark, a full-length album. I've got CDs as well as vinyl. Um, Procreation, there's a bunch of bands. Um, I, I can't remember the names of half of them. I'll have to like, I got to make an ad. But anyways, yes, Doc Records, yeah. there's a lot of stuff I'm going to be putting out over here. Like Master, there's a live Master album. A lot of shit. A lot of cool stuff. Good. Yeah, maybe like get get your uh kind of get a, a nice little jump start, you know, to to your label because it's got man, it's got potential. I hate I hate that there's kind of a lull in the uh activity. 
So. Well, it takes money, man. He's already asking me to put out some stuff with him. I'm like, yeah, I, I want to, but I, I got to... I just bought a condo and stuff like that. And it's kind of hard, but yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe later, but anyways, yeah, like we're, we're doing it. Doc records, slaughterhouse records, crisscrossing the spanning the ocean. And, uh, we'll see what happens there. So you're going to see a lot more death metal. That's going to be, uh, coming your way from overseas that it's interesting because it's not necessarily bands I'd pick, but they're pretty good. And I'm sure he's going to feel the same way about mine. So Right. It was going to be well, interesting. Well, good. I mean, variety is the spice of death. Variety is the spice of death. Right. Well said, Marcus. Oh, man. Next show, I'll be more on. Or, yeah, you seem a little uh, tired. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of just a little out of it. But like it's all said, right, uh, man. You've been a hard working motherfucker. That's why it's hard you, for me to do this show. It's not hard, but like on a Thursday night when you want to do it Thursday sometimes. <laughs> it's like I'll go in at ten o'clock in the morning and I'll get out at ten at night. And then the first thing I gotta do is come home and record. I'd rather take a shower and eat, but then you're like, Let's do it Thursday night. I'm like, okay. Uh, it's, <laughs> uh, it's funny because I, I I almost sent you that text, like, hey buddy. So what does tomorrow night look like? But I'm like, no, look, I gotta, I gotta do this. So, you know, hey, oh, well, there'll be better ones. Oh hell yeah! You, you can, you can edit this one to make it sound nice. I know you can. Oh, I always do that. I always edit out like everything, like all your sniffs and coughs and sneezes. <laughs> and... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You you don't even think about it, but there's so much of that that you do, that I edit, or just dumb shit that I say, probably even worse. I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> all your all your racist, misogynistic stuff that you say that you cut out, man. If people heard it, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Not racist, misogynistic, just more like not well thought out, but. Hey. <laughs> Uh, you know, we covered this last episode. Well. I am not a fucking racist. Never was, never will be. Hate that shit. Always have, know, always will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Now, That's my question all. to you is: it's exactly Steely what a racist Dan played would in say. Wyoming. Would, what? Steely Dan played in Wyoming. I said, my question to you is: if Steely Dan came to play in Wyoming, would you go? I would just to see Zombie Michael Brecker. Who? Oh, Walter oh, wait, Becker. Walter Becker, sorry. Well, they Michael played Brecker. for a while after he died. Like, I'm not sure how they pulled it. I mean, I guess they just had someone playing guitar, but it's kind of not the same. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think they played since then. It seems like maybe they kind of like, nah, forget it. I don't know. Do you ever read, did you ever read Donald Fagan's like uh, little autobiography? I have not. I didn't know he had one, but that seems like it might be some really selectively dry reading. Is it good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very dry. But, but he's like... Um, and he's almost like a, a Larry David, like kind of a neurotic. Yeah, I think he, he totally has like reminds just terrible, me of Larry David. like that's funny that you say that. <laughs> terrible, like stage fright, kind of like all these little anxiety issues, and you know, like uh, an awkwardness, you know. So it's pretty, it, but it is. I mean, and he's a hell of a funny writer too. So um, I would check that out if you have a chance. I didn't and know I think it was a, basically uh, like a it was basically like a tour diary of like one of his most recent uh, tours. I think I don't know. Really, really uh, interesting though. But yeah, I mean, he he talks about like just kind of having like this severe anxiety and. That's interesting. I wouldn't have thought someone like him would be like that. It's uh, he just seems like so in command of everything when he plays. Like I said, like I saw Steely Dan with Walter Becker, like the second time they came here, and they were so surprised that everybody loved them. I'm like, yeah, fuckers, you play exclusively to New York. You could have been playing to us all these years, but it was oh, yeah. one of the best shows I've ever seen. Like massively on point, like tight, awesome. Oh, show. dude. I will never forget how good that show was. And you can laugh all you want about Steely Dan, but they were fucking good. 
Oh, Steely Dan is amazing, Everything. dude. Everything, the backing vocals, the keyboards, the guitar, the the girls singing in the background, the fucking dude, all, the horns. It was so good. All I can think about is like how stressful it would be to be a musician in that band. <laughs> Cause the, the, oh, yeah, you know, they're, they're like... Those guys were just... They're like brutal. extreme. They're like, you know, you fucked up on this note. Like, oh, wow. Like, I've heard people talk about that that used to be in Steely Dan. Yeah. Like, oh, no. There's no artistic license. You play what he tells you to play. That's it. If you do anything different, he's on yeah. your ass. And and if it's like a literally like a nanoparticle off from what they want, man, you're doing it again, you know. So that's why yeah, like absolutely. the guys that played in Steely Dan are the probably some of the best musicians in the world, you know. So I was just gonna say that's probably exactly why they're what they are though you know it's mm. like say what like i think i wonder if gary newman's like that because they put on a really good show it was so good mm. like you can feel it when a band is on and like you can feel when the band is off and frontline assembly i'm sorry to say was off earlier you know last week and gary newman was like on like 100 it was crazy <laughs> and i hate to say that because i love frontline assembly and they still put on a good show it's just something mm. that just wasn't clicking you know it wasn't well, better. you know, if 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 the band isn't having fun, like that was probably that, what it was. They just seemed like it was towards the end of their tour. I know that too, but still, it was like, come on, guys. You know, you kind of, I mean, you may be mad about the microphone or whatever, but don't take it out on the audience. You know, he didn't say anything to us, but it was like the vibe was bad. And yeah, I mean, I feel like they didn't play as long as they could have either. I don't know, but either way, it was a good show. It was just kind of, eh, could have been better. But anyway, that was the last concert I've been to, and it's probably going to be the last one for a while. Is it? No one else coming that I care about. I thought Exhumed was coming. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'd go see them, but I I don't know. Are they? Uh, I think like Raven's check. coming, but I kind of don't really... I mean, they're coming with Vicious Rumors and, like, two other bands. I'm like, that's a lot of, you know... <laughs> A lot of melodic hair metal that or not well, they're not hair metal but not hair metal but it's kind of more like not something i want to sit through for like a whole entire night you know I, I don't know about you like how do you feel about that do you like like gary newman frontline assembly was good two bands that's it i don't like to see like four fucking bands and then plus openers you know i'm like no too much i, I how I'm do you feel about the same that way. Yeah, you get the ear fatigue, you know, it's just kind of like... Well, you stand there all night, on um, number one, and number two is like, you don't give a fuck about some of these bands, you just don't. Like, you wait to see your main band, it's like, shit, come on, man. Like that carcass show we went to, I could have done without cattle decapitation. It should have just been like... Seriously? Obituary carcass and... Yeah, I thought you liked cattle decap, though. Like, you were kind of impressed by them, weren't you? No, not really. I mean, they weren't bad. I mean, they were okay, but I was just amazed that they were more of like a melodic Manowar sounding metal. I thought they were like Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> but it wasn't like what I was. What band totally were you interested. hearing? Manowar? Whatever. It's like they had more of like, and more like Into Eternity, I should say, or like one of those bands, Sanctuary, where they were like more melodic. Oh, I thought it was going to be straight Cannibal Corpse, like brutal death metal about vegetarianism and like fuck people eating meat and. They weren't quite like that. It was like more metal, like heavy metal. Are you talking about Emma on Amarth? No, I'm talking about Cattle Decap. We we talked about this. Like I was like, oh, I thought they were like Cannibal Corps, like this raging, fast death metal. And you're like, no, no, they man, are. they're melodic. And... Well, I mean, they have melodic parts, but it wasn't anything. Like, like, they're brutal brrr, brrr, brrr. as hell. It wasn't like that at all. It was just more like, like. There was the it, it was more than what I thought it was going to be. We had this conversation, dude. You told me. No, we did not. Yes, we did. Well, yeah, I, they, I didn't even know who melodic. they were. We walked in. I'm like, who the fuck is this? And you're like, this is you need to listen. Like, it is? I think you need to listen to some like the recording stuff. Maybe I should because what I heard yeah. live, it sounded like more like Into Eternity or Sanctuary or something like that. It was wow. thrashy, but with like different vocals. I thought it was going to be death vocals, but it wasn't. Maybe that's the biggest thing is there weren't like growly vocals. It was more like just regular metal Dude. vocals or something. No, he's got total growly vocals. Like deep well, I didn't girl. hear. Yeah, I don't dude. know. That was two years ago now. I don't remember now. But go on YouTube and just like pull up one of the recent tracks, dude. You'll 
But anyways, that show uh, I could have done without one of those four bands, and that's the one I was least interested in. And I remember we both said Amon and Marth was surprising because we both thought they were going to sound like Enslaved, and they didn't. They sounded like a classic metal band, too. And we were like, oh, yeah. they were okay, but yeah, nothing I'd ever buy or go see again. But They are a lot of fun, you know? I thought it was a fun. They were all right. They were cool. It was cool, like, you know, like kids, kids dug them, you know? I mean, obviously, like, everybody at that show was there for that. Like, we were there for Carcass, but, yeah. you know. Well, I, I wanted to see Cattle Decapitation, too. Like, I think they're 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 going to be, like, huge. You think? Well, uh, they're already pretty big, but I, I there, there's something about their sound that is listenable. And I, I don't know any other way to describe it. I think they're they're really brutal. I think they're heavy and extreme. But there's something I don't know. And and maybe that's what you're hearing. Like you're hearing some kind of there there's like an accessibility about them that I think is gonna resonate with almost like a mainstream. Oh well, yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. It sounded a lot less brutal and aggressive like I was expecting, but it was more catchy, accessible, not quite so mm-hmm lethal like i was expecting it was more like but i think you need to listen to it because this dude it's lethal man like it's and it really the... makes sense that they're touring with carcass because carcass isn't like that anymore they're, i know carcass of old where they were aggressive brutal grindcore and now they're like this more harmonious like as you put it southern rock sounding death metal band <laughs> yeah they're like the litter skinner of extreme metal i don't see that but i mean i still you know they are they're much different than what they used to be. You know, I, I don't expect them to still be playing carbonized eye sockets, but God, I wish they'd play like one or two, you know, but it's not their style anymore. Mm-hmm. I get it. I get it. So therefore, I'm not going to really go on my way to see them. <laughs> it's nothing against them. Like, whatever. I like Carcass. I More power to them. I'm, I'm not bashing Carcass. I'm just saying. Times change. Yep. Poor old Mark. He's tired. Yeah. All right, I ladies am. and gentlemen. The Sandman's going to carry Mark away to his bed. Say goodnight to him. Good night, Mark. Little baby, don't say a word. <laughs> Never mind that noise you heard. I'm so... I'm, I was listening today in my car to the most recent podcast I put up where you're talking about the girl who took pictures of you while you were sleeping. Oh, I yeah. was like, God damn, dude. Psychotic. Like you with your mouth hanging open and boogers in your nose, yeah, like just slobber like, everywhere. And she's got pictures of it on her fucking computer, like whacking herself to it. I'm like, what the hell? I don't know. It's yeah, just, just <laughs> oh, fucking... only you. Don't ever only you can have that Lord. happen, and only I could have a job in a restaurant where I got to help help a guy wipe his ass. You know, it's like yeah, right. Fuck you. That's what we do, baby. Look, man, I don't want a good life. I just want an interesting one. And I'm getting it. Oh, hell yeah. That's not that interesting, but... Dude, you're interesting as fuck. Are you kidding me? You play in glam what? bands, you've been on tour, you've had bitches, drugs, sex, Shit. rock and roll. Damn. Yeah, but I'm still lonely. I don't know. Hey, we all are, man. But the alternative is what? To get married? Then what? Throw that stuff oh, away. Some... You don't need this guitar anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Oh shit. You're a funny guy. A funny S- guy. Yeah. Uh, some days today I yeah. Brain just isn't the wit is not as quick. It never was that quick, but man. You'll get there. Struggling. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to do like one of our annual uh or semi-monthly like blabbermouth shows where we'll look at blabbermouth and talk about dumb shit on there those are fun yeah do those because the topics are are the already uh, built built in yeah but they're not very good topics like i'm looking at it right now and there's really nothing like glenn tipton says parkinson's will not beat me but that's about it does that mean he's coming back or uh no i th- I hate to say it, Glenn, but it's 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 gonna be yeah, man. Oh um, come on. 
don't talk like it, that. If, if the Parkinson's doesn't get you the uh, fact that you're 80, will you know? So you know, I got to say, um, I heard one of the new Judas Priest songs on uh, Pandora. It came up on my Priest radio station the other day. It kind of, I was like, okay, you know, wow. So what? You know, I was kind of not impressed. Did you hear it yet? I heard some of it. I, I think it's just pretty solid. Like that's just one song I heard. I'm like, I was, I was kind of like, sounds like there's perfunctory going through the motions here. You know, I'm sorry, but there might be some of that. Maybe I'll have to listen to more of it, of course. But I, my first impression was that I was like, eh, you know, I, I've heard better. You know, whatever. I hate everything, though. I'm an asshole. Yeah, I know, dude. What do I know? What's wrong with you? There is something wrong with me. I don't like rap. I don't like Spotify. Like, what the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> Nothing's wrong with you. Oh, Mark, you're so sweet. You're perfect, just the way you are. Billy Joel, I love you just the way you are. Uh, Do you know what Billy Joel was in the heavy metal band before he did his own solo stuff? Uh, No. It's called know. Attila. Huh. Google that shit. It's called Attila. I think it was with one one T, maybe if I'm not mistaken, or one L, L or like one one letter. It, but it was called Attila, and he's on the front wearing animal skins, holding a sword with another guy, and it was kind of hard rock. Really? It was like it was like it was from the early '70s, though. It's it's really obscure. Like one of my friend, my friend Stan, Stan Bowman sent that to me from Missouri. He does a label called uh, Reality Impaired like a tape label mostly but he puts out like anything he puts out like stand-up comedy thrash metal punk rock noise mm. but he sent me that billy joel thing i'm like really that's billy joel I'm like fuck that's crazy man so there's something for you to look up while you're at work check that out i'll do it do it all right brother all right pal you have a good one we'll talk soon okay i'll be seeing you all right bro Sleep tight and remember. What? Stay metal. Uh, I don't All know. Right. I couldn't think of anything. All <laughs> right, I'm going to stop recording as soon as you yeah. say.